Hey YouTubers, uh, I have a few short things to cover. First off, I'm recording this vlog with uh, the new Rode NT USB that I bought a little while ago. Um, I was pretty happy with the um, sound quality of the Logitech C920 that I'm recording this video on, uh, but for other purposes, I felt like the Rode would give me better quality, and some testing proves to me that yes, it does, compared to my uh, Zoom H two and certainly my uh, USB headset so pretty happy with the quality I'm getting out of that microphone and I have it positioned here on an arm just out of sight of the camera the, the mic is literally right here so just out of the view of the camera seems to work out pretty well doesn't block my view of the monitor or anything and uh, pretty happy with that mic thus far um, so uh, I wanted to cover a few little things. Uh, you may have noticed that I just posted the Mindshift Gear Horizon Backpack. Not quite review, more of a, I guess, a first experience uh, sort of thing. And uh, I don't do this that often anymore, but I put some music in it. And I produce that music in GarageBand. And lo and behold, there's a copyright claim on it now. So my monetization is turned off on that video. So the thousands and thousands of dollars that I would have made off the video are not coming to me right now. Uh, but anyway, the, the copyright thing is kind of BS. Well, no, it's not kind of. It's complete and total BS. Uh, I put the music together in GarageBand. And I used like three loops, I think. One of which is a little guitar noodling thing. If you go watch the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, somehow that matched with content produced by um, some other artist who, you know, is part of some internet sort of publishing house. And, uh, well, I, it's not somehow. I know how it matched. This person used the same GarageBand loop for, for one aspect of the tune. And uh, I don't know how, well, I, I know how this works. So I'm a software developer. Um, I can't tell you in detail. I've never written such a thing. I've never written code to do this. But how this stuff works is they basically take, uh, for lack of a better word, a digital fingerprint of the sound of a piece of music. And uh, they probably take a lot of these fingerprints. And then uh, they register those with YouTube. And then when someone uploads a video that uh, has uh, music on it. They run some algorithms to see if the fingerprints in that music match the fingerprints that someone has registered with YouTube. That's the uh, layman's way to think about it. And uh, so, yes, uh, part of this person's song matches part of, or all of, my song. Uh, the thing is, that's because it's an Apple loop. And that's uh, that's not copyrightable. So uh, anyway, uh, YouTube doesn't care really how it's matched. It just matches. So these are robots doing this. Software is doing all this stuff. And I have a copyright um, strike. Uh, not a strike yet, but a, but a copyright claim against the music on that video. And uh, so what am I doing? Well, I uh, disputed it, obviously. I mean, it's so clearly obvious that I didn't rip that music off. Uh, the problem is the human is going to have to get involved. And they have something like 30 days to respond. So I'm waiting. Meanwhile, losing thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in the meantime. So I'll keep you up to date on that as if it's super important to you. Uh, next thing is I'm actually thinking about getting a Leica again. Uh, not a Leica, well, a Leica rangefinder. For some reason, I guess uh, it's because my local camera shop, Inglewood Camera, uh, had an M4P that I was kind of interested in. The price was okay, uh, but in the end, I didn't. It was on consignment. I didn't feel like the condition was good enough for the price. But that kind of got me started, uh, rolling down the hill, snowball accumulating desire. So I'm actually looking at M7s, believe it or not. If I find one for a reasonable price, I may go for it. Uh, we'll see. And I'll keep you updated on that as well. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of film news, which is unusual these days. The other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I got... I, I sold off all my Contax G gear 
probably a year and a half ago, uh, all except for this G1. And uh, I had it on eBay, but it wasn't fetching. Uh, basically, I had to buy it now, I think, for 125 bucks, and nobody was buying it. So I just kept it. It's just been sitting on the shelf. And uh, this morning, I ended up buying a 45 millimeter planer for this. And that's a really, really great lens. So I'll be using this. I intend to take it with me on my upcoming trip, uh, during which I'll be using that backpack. So uh, there you have it on the contacts front. Um, and more gear waving. I have yet to shoot this Rokinon other than like a mirror shot. Uh, but my plan for buying it, I didn't buy it for general purpose. I bought it for astrophotography. So I'm hoping next weekend to get out and do some wide field astrophotography with it. Uh, problem is the moon will be full. I'm just hoping I can get out after moon set and get some photos of the Milky Way and whatever else. So I do intend to fill you guys in about this lens. It's just... 14 millimeters is really, really short, and I'm not driven to take it out and do general purpose stuff with it. So uh, I should at least do a brick wall shot, shouldn't I, to see if all the corners are reasonable. Uh, but I haven't done that yet. So uh, that'll be coming up in time. And I think that's it. Uh, I obviously have other stuff I want to talk about in uh, future videos, and I'll be getting to that. I hope to do some videos while I'm on my trip in Kentucky and uh, we'll see how I do with that and uh, as always thanks for watching and I'll catch you later